I do think it's going to catch on uh, across all sectors, but uh, we, the University of Arizona for the last two years has been ranked as the number one globally ranked water program in the world. And we have a big water center here and Dr. Ian Pepper uh, has been at this work uh, going back even 20 years to testing polio and other uh, pathogens in wastewater. So when we ask him, uh, could we use this in our dormitories in the buildings on campus, uh, he got to work over the summer and uh, we've been utilizing it uh, since our students came back to campus a couple of weeks ago. So tell me how it works, because I imagine most wastewater is collected from a number of different places at a time. Um, do you kind of use it to say, OK, this particular area might have a case and now we can go do the swab test or something like that? Yeah, that's exactly what we've been doing last week. Uh, we uh, Dr. Pepper isolates the uh, the pipes that come out of each individual dorm and, and simply does tests. He, he gets PCR testing of that uh, wastewater. Uh, and then looks at the data and then alerts us when there's a positive hit, uh, a hot spot in one of our dorms. And then we go in and test uh, all the students because it's a great way, it's sensitive, as you said in your uh, preamble, uh, to find out that the building has uh, a positive case in it, but it's the proverbial uh, needle in a haystack. We then have to go in and test all the students there. and. Uh, the first dorm had about 300 students in it and three positives. Yesterday, we had four uh, dorms and 32 positives out of 600 tests. Overall, we've had over 14,000 tests we've done with 344 positives, so about a 2.3% uh, rate of infection. So I love the uh, ingenuity behind this approach, and I love even more that the individual behind it is Dr. Pepper. I think that is just wonderful. But let, so let me ask misunderstood. You, yeah, so, so let's talk about what you, you, you've just outlined what you've been finding and the idea that you're isolating it from dorm to dorm or building to building to see where the thing might happen. When you find a positive test in an individual, what happens to those individuals and to the others with whom they may have had contact? Yeah, so we have a, uh, a test, trace, and treat program. So when we find the positive case, they, uh, then our team goes in and does contract, contact tracing, meaning finding out who that individual has been around in the last few days. Uh, they are then moved to an isolation dorm and isolated out of the general population uh, for 10 days. Uh, the beauty of this test is we can find asymptomatic cases, and that's what we're really after. Find those unsuspecting vectors that are spreading this disease, and they have no idea that they're, they have the disease. So uh, positive cases are then isolated in an isolation dorm, and we have wraparound services to provide them Wi-Fi so they can take their classes remotely, food services, and uh, they get uh, telehealth check-in from from our health care providers and mental health counseling because, as you can imagine, your, your whole world of uh, starting your college uh, year out in the, mm. fr in the fall semester is interrupted because you have to go isolate. Yeah, it's a, and you know, you're starting out, like you said, already in kind of an isolated situation, you know, moving away, uh, presumably somewhere, and, and now this barely made any friends. Uh, so I can understand that. I, my final question is, what's the cost and the difficulty of doing this kind of test? Is it something that could be widely accessible? Yeah, I think uh, Ian Pepper uh, has said that the reagents to do the test is about $150 a test. Uh, it's a standard uh, PCR test. Um, obviously, you, you have to go out and manually take off a manhole cover and, uh, and then use sort of like a, a net that you uh, clean your pool with and drop it down into the sewage line and there's a bottle that collects the the wastewater and then he takes it back to the lab and does a PCR test in a few hours can tell us if there's a hot spot. So it gives us a, a great reference to go and systematically look at our dorms when they're hot spots.